Here's a five hooker. Be careful because yeah. this is valuable. That's a two thousand dollar combo. <laughs> that is a two thousand dollar. Woo! <laughs> but it's in the box with the paperwork. This one's got a, a tissue paper. That is uh, that is beautiful. I think that's probably the most expensive lure I've ever held. I'm kind of shaking. <laughs> Retro bassin, kicking some ass and wearing rayon jackets. Thinking about bill dance, watching these fish prance through my Ray Ban glasses. Ain't nothing better than 40 year old lures coming off of Zepco 33. Out on the bass boat, making beer cans float, doing some trespassing. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassin. Today is day two, for me at least, of the National Fishing Lore Collectors Club National Meeting in Springfield, Illinois. I'm standing in front of the Boss Center, which is the convention center which holds all of the various collections for both display and sale here. We're going to head inside, hopefully find some old school gold to buy, as well as some epic antique collections of lures to film. So what's the main bit you collect? I, I collect heading, early heading, typically 1912 is my specialty. That's what I love. The reason is they had a lot of different boxes in 1912. Uh, they had the pine tree box, white border, blue border, red border and very appealing to the eye. I can show you some examples here in a few minutes and maybe you can get some pictures, some more videos, but that's what I do and specialize in them uh, in top condition and I like combos, box, paperwork, and the bait in excellent to mint condition. That's my specialty. What's the name of the bait? Hedden. Hedden is the manufacturer, um, uh, specialized in underwater minnows, uh, which are Hedden 150s, which are five hook minnows and the head and one hundreds, which are three hook minnows. So wait, these aren't top water baits? They're not top water baits. No, they're underwater minnows. Now I do have some uh, some top water baits. Uh, those are typically uh, head and 300, and the older baits, uh, that's called a head and surface minnow. Are these, the, are these surface minnows or are they underwater baits? These are all underwater. These are all underwater. There's, uh, I did have a surface minnow I sold earlier. Uh, most of mine are underwater. We'd have to look and see. So how do you fish an underwater bait with five hooks? It's so, so I guess sort of like a spy bait almost, but you got to be pretty clear of obstructions and all that. Mm -hmm. That's true. That's true. And a lot of people have, uh, in the early days, they would, they kind of chastise Hedden for having too many hooks and maybe would damage, it, you know, uh, damage the fish and maybe he wouldn't live after that. Uh, he countered that in an article, and it's well documented, that, well, with this many hooks, then he would not get it into his gullet. So he is more apt to just hook them on the outside or uh, superficial where you could, you could release the fish. I started collecting uh, in 1995. I was, uh, I had bought a tackle box at a pawn shop because I, got, I bought like, it had it was packed with about 100 lures and I bought it for 35 bucks. And back then, lures were still three and four bucks a piece, so I did that to save money. I went through the tackle box, weeded out the baits that I did not want and the ones that I would fish with. And I came across this one, and it wasn't a heading, but it was a creek chub, jointed darter, and frog spot. I still have the lure today, matter of fact, I framed it. I kind of saw the future, and I framed it. I still have it, it's hanging in my bathroom. Anyway, that piqued my interest. Got to thinking a little bit about, um, about antique lures. And I said, you know what? I've heard of people collecting these because this lure was big and bulky and made of wood and jointed. I said, man, this is a cool lure. I know it's old. So that was, we didn't have internet at that time. I didn't. It was starting to come online around 95. I went to the bookstore and ordered a book, and it was called Antique Fishing Lures. And it was a full um, book with five lures per page with a small description, small history, and a price. And I fell in love, and I was hooked at that point. 
I started collecting a few things, but um, some some different manufacturers. But early on, I realized that Hedden, they were the number one lure manufacturer in the world for a century. So, and the extremely high quality lures that would stand the test of time. So I fell in love with the. Uh, the, eye, the, the beauty of the lure, the eye appeal, the boxes, uh, the paperwork, and the, histor the history of uh, Head Manufacturing Company. Have you ever thrown any of these? Plastic? I have. Uh, they're big and bulky compared to the plastic lures that we throw today, uh, but they're, they're fish catchers. There's no doubt about it. What's your favorite one? My favorite one is this particular one right here which is a 1904 Hedden 150. It's extremely rare. It's an oversized bait. That's, uh, there's only one other known. That's my favorite, but my favorites would be this case down here. Come are on, all Dan. these yours here? All these are mine. Um, these are some of my, this is my favorite. This is one of my favorite cases. These are the, your pine tree boxes. Oh, because it's got the trees there. See the pine trees yes, in the sir. box? In the, uh, and we have just kind of nicknamed it because of the visual effect. These are blue border. These are both, these are 1912. And then you can see some of the old historical paperwork that I have in this particular display. Here's a five hooker. Be careful because yeah. this is valuable. That's a $2,000 combo. <laughs> that is a $2,000. Uh, <laughs> but it's in the box with the paperwork. This one's got a, a tissue paper. That is uh, that is beautiful. I think that's probably the most expensive lure I've ever held. I'm kind of shaking. <laughs> that is not one you would cast, huh? No. So how old is that bait? Uh, that bait is about, this one's night about 1920s, this mid-20s. So how would they fish that? If that sinks, exactly what would be the, the you method? You throw it out there it? and just reel it in. Let it sink however you want, reel it in. You wouldn't fish it in a, of course, in a, a wooded or a brushy area. Uh, typically fishing from a boat. Super strike trip. And it looks, as I've held it, it's almost like a plastic-like material. It, it's a celluloid material. And again, the guy was, he put it together as an airplane. This was the wings and everything on the airplane and he got airborne and crashed. And he didn't want to redo that. So, and he was a fisherman, avid fisherman. So he used the material and started fabricating shrimp to fish with. And friends liked what he was doing and said, hey, can you make me a few of those? And he started a little business and so forth. Have you ever cast one? No, I can't say I've ever cast one. I'm, I'm scared it'd be so fragile. I, I wouldn't want to do that. I wonder how they fish. I guess that, that tail is supposed to pull yeah. up and do something, huh? Articulate and move through the water. I'm assuming you didn't get all those at the same time. No, no, those came. I'm, a good friend of mine has a huge collection of those. He's probably got the biggest collection in the world, and he's got different versions of the box and the paperwork and, uh, you know, about every variation you can have in those. And uh, I, I told him at some point, I said, Bernie, I'm going to have to get one of those, and, uh, you know, I don't want to start a big collection of them, and it gets addictive. You get into, hey, I don't have that one, I don't have that one. So. What's the deal with the big hook? Tarpon rig, tarpon hook, and I imagine that a tarpon would tear that to bits. <laughs> and then what do we have next to that, the, uh, the creek chubs? Creek chub wigglers, number 100 wigglers. So that's, where, where is the Creek Chubbs place? I know it's got a pretty prominent place in crankbait history, right? The, the Wiggler. Yeah, and that's, um, uh, that's one of the first really crankbaits, if you will. Um, you know, a lot of fishing lures predate that, but that, that's, they were kind of pioneers in, in the crankbait with the diving lip and so forth. So it's pretty neat. I'm not a big creek chub collector, but I like the wigglers. They're just very attractive. You look like you're a pretty big creek chub collector. Yeah. <laughs> What's your favorite collection you have on display today? Uh, I'm going to have to say early heading multiple metal mina, which um, some of these pieces are obviously different. 
and they're from the Hidden Factory Archives. They came by a group of early collectors, got into the old Hidden Factory plant, and they had an archive board up on the wall that had their test baits and prototypes and all the stuff that they were working with. And um, so a lot of these are kind of the evolution of this bait in box. That's a one of a kind, unknown. This is the actual heading prototype that they were fishing in the test tank. It's made of aluminum, which all of the other ones, they did it in aluminum to mess with because aluminum's easy to work with. But their production ones are brass and plated, nickel plated or gold plated and so forth. That one is also off the archive board. It's the only one known, musky size, multiple metal minnow. How do you fish the uh, multiple metal minnow? It was an underwater, it was a very short-lived lure. They came out with it in 1908, was the first year they offered it. Uh, so some of the archive things predate that as they were playing with them. But they offered it in 1908, and I think it only lasted until 1912. And I, maybe they didn't sell well, they didn't fish all that great. So they, they weren't one of their long running baits. And what's the poster at the very end of your display? It's actually not a poster, that is a catalog. That's a 1914 catalog, which is catalog number 12 for Hidden, because they started in 1902. And um, that's the little mailer, which I found here at the show and I couldn't turn it down. But that's the mailer that they sent out and said, our 1916 art catalog, Jim Hedden's Fish and Tackle, we have mailed your copy today. And I saw that there and I said, hey, I gotta have that and put that with my, uh, my catalog. There's, there's a few of them around, but that, that one is just so clean and nice. You know, I, I just recently got that. I was very happy to get it. And what's it lastly, what's this guy? That's These are also baits out of the Hidden Factory archives. And um, they're all similar. Uh, a friend of mine collected these and had them for years. He, he passed away here about a year and a half ago. But he loved this bait, which got nicknamed by a bunch of collectors, the Star Wars prototype. And uh, he loved that one, but I really like this one with the keel on the bottom. That one's got a lot of appeal to me. But they're, they, they were never production lures, so there's not a number. They're, they're not known. They're just something Hidden was playing with in the factory and, and just for whatever reason, never put them out on the market. What draws you to Hedden? I, I noticed the theme here. So what was... It just, you know, I started early on collecting and I collected anything and everything, whatever I, whatever I liked. And I finally just figured, you know, I need to get a little direction. I'm getting crap all over here, so, um, and Hedden is, is really what I like the best, so that's kind of what I, what I centered on and went with. So, all right, here's one. I actually have two of these in my collection. Mm -hmm. Tell me about this bait, like how it came out, how it's supposed to be fished. It almost like a, it's like a bingo bait, but it's got the, this weird sort of spinner at the front, the metal. It's a Dwayjiak Super Spook. And I can't tell you a whole lot about them because I collect really, I focus on the early stuff and that's a little bit later, but that's a case of baits that, that my same friend that I got the archive stuff for had when he passed and, and I got it from uh, his wife that he left behind. Wow. This is uh, a prototype which did come out of the factory for this, for this lure when they were making it and they made them for a very short time in wood and there's there's two or three here in the room in different colors but they never had them in the catalog um hidden came out with pyrolene is ooh, the new material for lures and uh so they're made out of pyrolene and um they found out after a couple of years that the pyrolene really didn't last a long time and it started to degrade so um they were they went to another material eventually I like this tackle box. Yeah, that's nice. <laughs> yeah. This is a neat one. I've been looking at this lure for a while. That's a... Wow. That one's pretty nice, too. And what was it? what is this called? The Lunny Frog, L-U-N-Y. That's a heavier bait that I envisioned. Yeah. I didn't realize how... that's And it's thicker. Yeah. So what is that made of? Uh, Praline. Okay. And here's another one. And you can see the difference in the colors. 
Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Um, and, and they also do that same bait in the closed leg. This is called the little lunny. So that's the closed leg version? Yep. And what's the difference with it? So what, why do they have some with the open leg and some with the closed leg? Because they didn't realize when they made these that these legs would break if you hit a rock. Oh, so is this the original one? Yeah, and then they went to a closed leg version, which they put a... Wow. It was all plastic inside of here. Yes. And then this is the baby one. The baby lunny. Okay. Wow. But so they, is this a crankbait or a topwater bait? That is a crankbait. Okay. It will dive down probably about three, four foot. Have you ever actually thrown one? No, I have not. <laughs> like not, not at 70 bucks, no, huh? No, no. And that's a good price on because I've been looking around. <laughs> yeah. Now, yep. who made this bait? Hedden. Okay, so this is an old Hedden. Very yep. cool. Yep. That's a good looking bait. Yeah, that one's 60, huh? Yeah. So it's called the, the, the Looney Frog? Yeah. The reason that one is, you can see it's got a spot on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something happened to it, but... Somebody fished it. <laughs> yeah, but even, you know, just like the difference in the colors, how bright this one is, and that one's a little duller. It's little, just yeah. the way they... It's just the way it happened. That's it's, a... That's a... The interesting is that single hook in the back is kind of weird. That's a wild bait. I'd like to see what that did in the water. I'd be scared to throw it, but... Yeah. Well, so yeah. what years did they make this thing? Ooh, that would have been in the... I'm going to say the 50s. And probably up to the early... 60s. And I'm just guessing on that because sure. I don't know for sure. And I saw this thing. So what is this? That is a creek chub beetle. That's and I've seen pictures the... of that, and I gotta tell you, I thought when I first saw it, before I saw that, I thought that was a small bait. That thing's a monster. Uh, they said cranking those, you would be wore out at the end of the day. <laughs> it feels like it's it's like an ounce and a half, yeah. two ounces. Yeah. Um, and that's and then a you got big all these spinners on the back. Yeah, there. What is Water. This? That's the way they came. Wow. Okay. I mean, you talk about putting out some flash. Then they I, came in different. That's called green. And then they had red and orange and a. Creek chubbed a couple of pin eyes there. Oh yeah. That's a, that's actually that's just the wildest looking thing. What year was that? Oh no, that I, I don't know. Now. Okay. It wasn't the eighties. I'll tell you that. No, no, no. <laughs> but they were like I said. If you fished with one of them all day, you was gonna be wore out because they put some pressure. Wow. All right, last. I you can tell I gravitate to the weird looking things. Weedless Widow. What the heck is that? That's Hedden. Uh huh. Weedless Widow. And these these front bars actually, and I don't know if these do it, but they actually crossed and they hooked underneath oh. the hook. And then you'd catch something, of course, they'd pop out. Oh. Or they'd keep you from getting hung up in the weeds. <coughs> 25 bucks, that's not bad for an old head like that. No, huh? the only reason it's that cheap is the hair on the back of it is not in great shape. Okay. But now they're, some of them, if you can find them, they're just, per, they're just beautiful. Would you dare fish for this? No, probably not. I've got some baits that I would, that are really beat up and yeah. stuff that I that would. That one looks a little bit too nice, huh? Yeah. That's a good looking bait though. I have a mercury minnow. And see, it's got the little mercury in the back. Whoa! Isn't that what? wild? Yeah, those are illegal fish with. I could see that. Yeah. So that is filled with mercury. mercury. It's got a little dot of mercury. It's not the only bait. There were several baits made that were filled with mercury. I've and what's several. why? Why would it be filled with mercury? Well, but the box it, says it, it, that yeah. it makes it move. Yeah, it, the mercury is it the shifts. It and changes that. the weight distribution. <laughs> oh my goodness! Isn't that just the craziest? It's like a toxic Laura. So that is, yeah. Yeah, mercury does it. Yeah. yeah. Isn't that crazy? That's like an old thermometer, but but a yeah. lure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and is it heavy? No. What's it feel? Oh my goodness. I just, I don't understand. I don't either. Is that an air bubble? Is that what I'm looking at? No, that's the mercury in there. Oh, that's, that's it. Just yeah, because yeah, mercury yeah. is a just liquid. It's just there. a little bit of... Yeah. <laughs> but mercury's heavy, and then when you're fishing it, it changes position, so it changes the way the, the whole bait's thing. moving. Yeah. So how much did you pay for this uh, this mercury minnow? Twenty-five dollars. That is not a bad deal. <laughs> I thought so. <laughs> oh, yeah. You would you would want to bang this against a boat dock? Huh? No, 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 no. <laughs> Thank you. It, it, it's, it's, it's a good find. It's extremely illegal to fish with it, but 
I'm not gonna fish with it. Well, at this point, I'm pretty much running around this convention center. I noticed some folks are starting to slowly cover up their displays, and my box is still uh, a little bit too empty, unfortunately. But my wallet's not, so maybe that's a good thing. I'm gonna hit these last couple owls before uh, it is too late and hopefully make a final stop by the NFL CC display to grab a little swag before I get out of here. But in the meantime, I see some big tackle boxes right here I'm gonna have to check out. And I know there's something in it you can't live without. Yeah, so what do you, <laughs> what's that? <laughs> I said, I know there's something here that you can't live without. Yeah, well that's, that's the story of my life. So uh, yeah, what to steer me in some direction. So I've been on a bit of a tear today. Um, just getting you, some river runs and headings and arbogast and stuff like that. So I like the weird stuff. Anything, uh, uh, and I usually cast this bright stuff. Bright eyes. What is? What are those? Uh, P and K bright eyes, and they're they're definitely unique little lures. Bright eye, yeah. No, I've never seen that before. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Ain't them cool? Illinois made. Okay. Um, and that's like a crankbait, but it's got a little wire on it. Sure does. And that looks like a looks like a banana almost. <laughs> so who and made this? Uh, P and K. Uh huh. And that's yellow spot tail is what they call it. Oh, that's a beautiful bait. So I guess you just throw that out like a crankbait. Have you ever cast one of those? Uh, yeah, I did. I've and I've caught fish on it. I've got a couple that are beat up that weren't good enough for a collection sure and sure. when you find those you just throw them in your tackle box wow i like the eyes on that that's wild isn't it <laughs> how much is that guy because that comes with a box that's a nice the nice box setup. and the papers out I, I want 75 a piece for these three. yeah very nice that's a good bait oh i've never seen that before that's a cool one and then these are called water waves so it looks like a river, a, a river run, right? It or is it? a river run, but it's not painted. Those are, the prefix to the number is E for everlasting, and the color is put in the plastic and then swirled. So you can't ever scratch the paint off. You can have a scratch, but the paint won't ever come off. Oh, wow. So yeah, they yeah. make that in red and green and yellow. and. How many years do they make those for? About three. Back okay. In, back in the late 30s, early 40s. Beautiful. And like everything collectible, the internet has slowly killed it because we used to think there was only five in the world, and now we found out there's 5,000. Gotcha. But uh, That's still a nice bait. What's that go for at the show here? Uh, 200 for the choice. One of them's going back home in my collection. <laughs> I don't blame you. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. That's awesome. I'm trying to think what else I see here that uh, I haven't seen before. So, all right, this thing is, this fluorescent. That's, that's actually a Creek Chub anniversary lure. It's one of those lures that oh, they, the issues. Yeah, uh, they made it to be collectible. Yeah. And anything you make to be collectible usually isn't. Yeah, gotcha. Okay, so it's a beautiful piece. It'd be great for somebody starting out. But it's and not. It, a... And it's only $20 lure. Okay, that's a cool if looking the, bait though. Yeah, if you had that one in, in wood, Yes. The original of that, you're looking at five, six hundred dollars in the, that same condition. <laughs> the giant, giant uh, vamp spook, huh? Yeah, and <laughs> the guy up in the front that's got all those handmade baits, he yes. made this. He, okay. Wow. I need one of them boxes. Yeah, and I saw it and had to have it. I don't blame you. I don't blame you. And then you go to the other end. Of the so spook. actually, hold on. What's this thing? This is a wild looking bait. Okay, that's that's a Fluger Mustang, and that's the saltwater version, and yep. they call that a flasher plate okay. on the top and the bottom so that the fish doesn't bite it in two, because all the saltwater fish have big teeth. So that it doesn't bite it in half. Yeah. So before doing a through wire, you just do the, the bite plate. Yeah. <laughs> and I've got one of these at home that was in my collection uh, that I'm going to replace with that one probably. That's a nice one. And it's got teeth marks down the top of this plate. And then you got the other end of the spectrum of, yeah. of uh, <laughs> I know this one. <laughs> the old power pack frog, yep. Yeah. <laughs> this was invented by an attorney in Dallas, Texas, I think. And, um, yep. 
Frogs and the fish. The frogs and the fish. Yep. I still like that bait. This is like my first in high school. This is like the first top water that I threw. And, and they catch for, fish. For many years, the biggest bass I ever caught was on this bait. Yeah, and people say, it'd be fun if they could catch one. Well, they do. Yeah, you throw it, <laughs> throw it out, and when it lands, uh, give a jerk, and it'll pull that string, and it sits there and goes in a circle with the tail flapping. It does. It goes in a circle, 100%. Is this, what is that? That is a monster. I think... I've been told this is a musky lure from Wisconsin. Okay. Look at the lip on that sucker. Oh my gosh. I think probably dies 40 foot. <laughs> so that's a musky lure, huh? Yeah, it's a musky lure. That's, I think uh, it would look great in your collection. <laughs> it, that it would. How much is this guy? Yeah, I had him at 25. I'm going to sell him for 15. Nah, not a bad deal. That's what the last day of the show is, right? You come and get the uh, get the deals on these. That's a nice bait. <laughs> oh man! And then what? I think for fifteen bucks, that, I can't go wrong. That actually is a good deal. Um, these are poppers. Is this a generic popper, or is that a certain brand? That's a pawpaw. That's a pawpaw. Okay. Yeah. And is this a? Uh, That's a right McGill? McGill. I can give you a good deal on those. How about fifteen bucks for the pair? Fifteen bucks for the pair of those? Yeah. Uh, oof, I think. Uh, wow, I think that's a deal. I think I'm gonna have to get those two for that. And then for another fifteen, you get the musky lure. I don't fish for musky, actually. So that's. I think I'm. <laughs> but what is this? Oh, that's a bonds bait. That's a hundred and a quarter. That's still a cool bait, though. So that's that front, a cool that bait. front spins. Yeah, that rotates. See a Jensen frog here. Yeah, that's 35 bucks. Oh, the Mercury Minnow. Okay, somebody else had one of these. Yeah, but did they have them in the box with the paperwork? They did, they, they bought it from you. They bought it today. So maybe. <laughs> and then, could you, could you pop that one out for me? Sure. So I've seen this online. I have no idea about it, what it is, what it does. It was unsuccessful. That much I can tell you. So the Helga Devil for casting or trolling. That's a pretty glorious looking box. And then look at that thing. Yes, sir. <laughs> no, it's just me leaving it. Um, so that's like a, a top water. Yeah. So that's like a top water of some sort. And, huh. Yeah, that's a that's a funny bait. So you know anything about that? I've seen them around. You don't, yeah. They're not real common. The bait is, the box is exceptional. Yeah. So it's obviously some sort of top water. Yep. Jointed bait. Um, wild. How much is that guy? I had 45 on him, but I'll tell you what. If you take those two right McGill's for 15, you can have this guy for 35. Wow. See? What a deal. So you like me, though. If I came to the show and had a table, I'd probably buy more than I'd sell. Do you Most have that problem? Most of us do. <laughs> You're just using money to convert one lure to another. <laughs> That's all we're doing. That's why they call it room trading, right? Because even if you're using money, you're still just trading. Money for money. I will take these two right McGill's. That'll be my uh, purchase of the day. Okay, so that's thank fine. You. Love it. Beautiful. Honestly, that's a good looking bait. Wow. Look at this. Yeah, and I, and I love to throw a, a nice little shallow crankbait like that. Look at that. What do you have here? You like those? That's a, those are Clark's. Like the water scout, but it's top water. Fellow over there sold it we were in room trading last night. Isn't that wild? Well, I'm kind of looking for frog colored lures for a display I'm doing. That's that's a nice one, huh? Would you trade it for that? <laughs> no, no deal. <laughs> Ooh, I was pretty close to trading that Clark popper out, but uh, I got to look at that frog pattern and decided I, I had to keep that thing in my collection. Well, I'm about out of time here. Going to catch up with Mark, um, show him the goods we got, and we'll see if I made some good buys today. How'd I do? How'd I do? Here you go. This All right, Randy, show me. Look, look, here. You got a red wing blackbird jitterbug. I did. There's 25. You got a tipsy cuda, tipsy arbor gas. Yep. Lays on the side. Everybody thinks it goes like this. No, it goes like this. Yes, it does. Two bugaboos. Very nice, very nice mud bug. <laughs> very nice. That's a good fishing bait there. And some popper scouts and some Clark water scouts. Here's their 
good piece, I think, in my opinion. This is a gray mouse. Yep. Gray mouse jitterbug. Look at that. Cool. It almost looks like a mouse, doesn't it? I feel like I did about 10 or 15 on most of those. Oh, you did? You got, you I did, did 10 on the poppers. Oh. I think I did five on the on the uh, mud bugs. The Clark Water Scout popper and frog spot. I almost just Look traded that away. And oh I no! I shouldn't. Oh no! Somebody else gonna, he, he saw it in my box and he goes, "I want that." And I go, "No, mm, no, no, no! We're no. gonna put that over here on this side. <laughs> Keep it clean." That's about the same colors. I did. Well, I want some fishers. Well, this I want is a, some fishers. There's your fisher. Keep yep. that one. Definitely. You did all right. And then river runt. Let's see what we're And look at this one. I, I had to have that. that Is seemed... it a razorback? Look at that color. It's a same I, I think that one was. I think Razor. I did 15 it's on that one. Yeah. Stickleback. Yeah, that was last night, wasn't it? Or was it's that the morning? Yeah, I don't, think, I, morning, I don't yeah. think I've seen that color on a stickleback. It's crazy because I can't see it. So it's like a fire color. Fire it's like crow. It's a red green. It's here. And this is going to be a fisher. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I wanted a black shore man out of It's still got two, two like piece those. hardware. That's two piece harder. That's uh, mid 60s. Woo! So dinner. That would be a good vintage. If you catch fish on that, what you will. Good vintage. Bag. So what's what's the what's the purchase of the trip? You think? Oh. And by the way, these were two for 15. Yeah. If you <laughs> if you went to sell it, you could probably get 150. Wow. Not everything. Yeah, all right. Sells from sample display. Ooh. Um, they had a, they made a track and they slid these down that track just as far as they could go. And how are they attached? These are glued. Wow. I'm pretty sure they're glued on. I never tried to get one off. I wouldn't off. try to get one off. That's um, a good look. One, two, three, four, five. Dozen. Twelve of them. Yeah. Nice. That's yeah. cool. Where'd you pick that up? Um, I bought this in Tennessee. Okay. Pigeon, Pigeon Port Show. There were like four boards and like a goofball only bought one. Well, that wraps up lure shopping on my inaugural trip to the NFLCC national meeting. Uh, I think I'm leaving with some pretty good stuff and uh, I like kind of behaved. <laughs> if you're looking for more old school content, click right here. Otherwise, I'll see you next Saturday. But until then, keep the carpet side up and definitely Fish it old school. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassoon.